Hey guys, welcome back to Broken Boxster Battle episode 15, where hopefully it is the final engine teardown video where we're going to crack the case open and get inside. So let's go. This is the state of our engine currently, and uh, we have, if you haven't seen the earlier episodes, here's a link here, and in the description will be a link to the playlist with all the videos in this series. So uh, on our last video, we got into to be able to see the IMS bearing, and everything else is stripped off of this engine. So um, yeah, I guess they called this the short block. So I'd heard that term before, Never really knew what they were talking about. So this part of the engine from here, where the uh, pistons are fully extended to over here, it's considered the short block. Now when you add the heads on it, I guess that is the long block. It's the full width of the engine. All right, let's do this. Uh, as usual, warning, I don't know what I'm doing. But as you can see all the way down the seam, there are a ton of 10 millimeter bolts. So. I'm just going to start going around this thing and uh, taking off bolts. Got to use a uh, smaller wrench so that you can get all the way up against the block on some of these. I'm just going to go across the top. Couple up here. Okay. I guess I'll just go ahead and take them all the way off. Hoping these are all going to be the same length, so I don't have to keep track of them. So far, so good. All right, that's getting old fast, so with a long extension, I can reach over here with some power tools. All right, got all those bolts down here, so go ahead and pop these ones off. And rotate this guy back here. Every time I rotate this thing in a new direction, more fluid starts coming out. Start loosening the ones on the transmission side. So this is the bottom of the engine, and uh, it has several more. I go inside the sump here. We have two. All right, these threads are all oily, but uh, same size bolts. Okay, so this uh, safety wire thing here to hold our engine on has a 13 millimeter bolt. And probably, yeah, a nut down there on the other end. All right, I'm gonna hold the nut from below. And then this guy pops off. Hey. Pretty cool, so we'll save him for later. Now that might be all of the fasteners. It's all of the ones that I see now anyway. And it looks like there's a big gap right in here to put a big screwdriver. Oh, yes. I hear it popping right off. Looks like we got another gap here. separating and then right in the middle on the back side is another one okay it is definitely coming apart 
So I can see everywhere it's coming apart nicely except for like right here. So I just looked up and realized we have some large bolt thing going through the top. So that's obviously attached to something. So let me remove that. That thing is a giant 10 millimeter hex. It's set back kind of far in there. So I'm just gonna need an extension. And something tells me I might need to lock the engine again because this might rotate it. Right I'm stick one bolt back in here. All right, as soon as it broke free, super easy. Take this bolt back out so I don't forget. Apparently this is just a plug with a crush washer, so ha. Huh. Yeah, my bad. I guess we didn't need to remove that. Let's snug this thing back up before I forget about it. All right, right up here on the top of bank two, we have uh, this Torx guy. This is a T50. All right, that was not holding the halves together but if we flip this thing over opposite our bank two here in bank one there is a bolt so it's right in here and it's also a t50 and this guy so you can see this is the pry area on this half and then the other two corners have their own pry areas so now with those removed let me Oh, yeah, okay. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> one of those two, probably the one over here, was uh, definitely holding them together because now it just pops right off very easily. And I'm gonna set my chain here. So, if everything is disconnected, it should pry up very easily, so don't force it. So, one here. One on this corner, and one on this corner. Yeah, definitely a two-person job. Gonna phone a friend. Sweet! Piston rings, just like I've read about. Crank carrier and crank. Was this the side that made contact? Uh, this is bank two, so this was the good side. Okay. So, yeah. So this is the one that's it. Top dead center, I guess. Wipe these up and have a look at our pistons, but they all seem nice. All right, I got Conrad over to help me. We we're gonna to try to lift the crank case out of here and move it over here to the table so I can work on it separately. Uh, the case, we think, is all disconnected. It's just sitting on two uh, dowel pins underneath it. So theoretically, we can just lift it off, take it over to the table, so here's our first attempt. <laughs> so the only thing that, other than the dowel pins, the pistons are still on the bottom. So right. it's gonna give us some resistance. So I'm gonna grab that here. That's not even moving. Take off the RMS. I'll take off this one too. So I can get my hands underneath it. Hold on one second. I think that there might be. Now, how do we? We got irritated. It. It's not so. Let's look at the side. <laughs> Hold it here. Yep. Now we remember. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show the audience. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so yes, there is still one more bolt in here. Oh man, that's that 12.10 millimeter, isn't it? Yes. Do I have one of those? Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we just <laughs> figured it out. That one actually is one of the 14 that hold the crankcase together, so we do not need to remove that one. But right up here, we got this guy. Mm -hmm. And he is what's holding it on, so let me remove this. This is just a standard T50. And is this going to fall out like this? Not in that position. <laughs> it's fall out. Check out this bolt. This bolt is awesome. Freaking long as hell. Ta da! Alright, now that it's hopefully unbolted, we'll mm -hmm. try this again. Take two. So, I do it. Oh, I did this. Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> Except this shaft is going to fall out. Um, do you want to do it a little bit towards me? You know what, actually, let's make it a little bit flatter on, on my side, okay. and then we'll sort of pull it out this way, all right? Let's drop these. Because that's, that's eventually how we're going to have to... There we go. Let's get this chain over on this side so, it, so, the, so the weight... All right, ready? <laughs> so we need the pin. Yeah. Releasing this side only. I can't get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull up on the bottom. Seems like this top is okay. Let me pull it on the bottom. Not back in. Yeah. Um, let's tilt it a little bit more towards me. Yeah. There's one piston now. Yeah, come out. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one more! <laughs> right. ah. I got it. Alright, all right, make sure that all the chains and stuff are out of the way. I got it. Yep. Chains out of the way. <clears throat> Ta-da! <laughs> that last flipping bolt. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> All right. This is what our next step is. Uh, it sounds the uh, pistons yeah. on my end. Yes. It's good to have a right. We have almost met in the middle now. I'm tearing it down as Conrad's building his up. At some point, really soon, we will uh, be in the same yeah. spot. Look at that, huh? Pretty, you know? IMS bearing, again. Very nice. This so we just have to uh, take out a couple bolts over here to get that tensioner off. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the plastic piece. You said this is like 80 bucks to replace? <laughs> yeah. Just this little. Yeah, thing. just that little piece. <laughs> it's like 60 or 70. I've got a list of all the stuff. Um, make sure you That's keep, like ring. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, make yeah, sure that circlip clip and, and the ring, and make sure you keep these bolts. These are the ones that um, somebody said. They have a built-in washer. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and so they're super special for some reason. Um, yes. Yeah, and so the bolt that we were seeing from underneath was probably one of these two, Aaron. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, don't take that out, because hopefully I'm not going to take my crank case apart. No, no, but, but, and that, that last bolt was... Yeah, I would have to buy a new one if I took that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. So now it is on the table, and I'm going to eventually move the table back over here. <laughs> so I don't have to bend over under the car. I guess we could have done that originally. But, uh, Beautiful. Oh, and this is one of those replaceable ones. This looks a lot like mine. 
Let's replace it. Uh, the, the, see this bearing? Now that, now that it's off of the engine, mm -hmm. it has this clip that holds it in place. Yep. Uh, you, you take this out, you pop this out, mm -hmm. pull the bearing, yep. and you put it. Now, this bearing seems to be a little bit smaller than the one that I have, but still replaceable. Uh -huh. That's the way to do this. Oh, you mean as opposed to just the ones that are non replaceable? Right. Bearings, yeah. Right. But yeah, because I think, well, now that we have this out, can we rotate this? Mm, maybe not with these sitting on the ground. Well, no. You, if you hold them. Okay. Well, this one's all right. Let me see. And when they get all the way in there, <laughs> they bind up a little. <laughs> So when they get all the way, you gotta lift them up or else they'll bind up down there. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got one coming this way. Yeah. Yeah. And, then this and, guy. And, it, and it's moving and the, it, it feels fine. Yeah, what I wanted to check was the these, teeth. Because this is, this is the section where my chain broke. Oh, I think Do you're you missing a, a tooth groove. here, Bubba. Right there, oh, that yeah. one, right it's there. Like snapped off. I mean, but it's one of what, like forty? I mean, nobody's really. Yeah. Gonna miss it. <laughs> yeah fine. They do feel a little uh, rough though, like some metal's uh, been grinding on them. Yeah, but that—that that is the big one right there. That's the big missing tooth right there. It's a lot of force on this engine. Yeah. So we will be replacing the intermediate shaft, and uh, I think I'm going to go with your bearing because it's seventeen dollars. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Well, you're going to get another mm. shaft. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and just replace that. And I've got the tools to, to pull this out. Uh -huh. The shaft is, maybe it'll come with this, maybe it won't. You, you tap this in. Mm -hmm. So this gets tapped in, it falls inside the shaft. And then and you, you have a bearing pullers. puller that goes in, grabs it, locks on here, pulls the bearing. Yeah. And then if you properly freeze the bearing and heat the IMS, uh -huh. it'll drop right in, but, and then you gotta put the clip on. Yep. Biggest thing is, before you put the bearing in, remember to put this piece in. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me how I know. Yeah. yeah, so I'll also be replacing all three chains because there's been stress on these yeah, chains. Yeah, I'm stretched. sure they're stretched, so. Not cheap. But everything else looks pretty good. And mm -hmm. maybe the pistons that ended up hitting the valves. I'll have to well, if you want to go, up. if you want to go three point eight, I got a set of pistons I can hook you up with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Before closing this one out, I just wanted to go ahead and remove the final few items here. So I'm going to uh, start with this guide over here. It just has this little clip. I think these little ring pliers are going to be just barely small enough. Yes, perfect. Came right off. And I just bought a bag of bags, just a bunch of these little bags. I'm going to, I wish I had from the beginning, but they just came in today. So I'm going to start putting all of the uh, related parts together. And so I'll put this with this arm in one bag together. Let's see. So I think, yep. Just slides off the pin now, and uh, that surface looks fine. Ooh. This one looks like it's starting to uh, get chunked up a little bit. Yep, I'll definitely want to replace the uh, plastic cover on here. As I was going to bag it, a little washer popped off, so drop that in there. Ah, now it's coming full circle. So that pin for my installation video with Conrad of uh, his crankcase, that is the pin that that guide goes on. So I was kind of wondering what that pin was for. All right, these are both 10 millimeter. They were torqued on super hard. All right, yeah, so there's the uh, built-in washer. It does not come loose. Same guy there, and now I assume this will, ah, one third one down here at the bottom. All right, this whole piece comes off. And 
and inspect this guy. It's just some debris, so this piece actually looks really good. And these little uh, barrels will slide out of the holes, so there are three of them. And they go in this orientation. All right, now the IMS is just sitting in this plastic thing, so you can just uh, lift it out. And we got a big chain. All right, pop that chain off. You need to get a new one of these guys. So in case you've never seen what the intermediate shaft sits in, it is just this little plastic piece that's bolted on top of the uh, crankshaft carrier. Well, on the bottom of it, actually. It's sitting upside down here on the table. It's kind of interesting knowing that this just sits down in here and it can slide around. Nothing holding it in place. So sitting in this orientation, this is bank two. I was confused and it took me a while to figure that out because the flywheel goes here. So I was thinking on this side of the flywheel should be bank one, but these were the good pistons. And then I remembered that this is upside down right now. So if it was flipped around the other way, this would be bank one, but this is bank two. And in order to assemble uh, this back into there, you need to have the pistons off of the uh, rods here so that you can press these in um, to the bores and then attach it blindly, which you'll see later on, which is not looking forward to. Um, but there are these little clips in here. You can see the bottom of one. So these clips, there's one on each side of a piston. And those clips are holding in what's called your piston pin, I believe, which is just this little hollow tube that's inside there. So um, when reassembling, I'm gonna have to look at the case again. One of the sides, I think it's this side, you have an opening in to insert a tool all the way through here to install that last pin and clip. So on the back side of it, you pre-install this clip so that the pin will not come out the other end and then you have to come in and install this one so i'm going to figure out the correct side just to double check i think it's this side and if i'm correct then i'm going to have to remove all of the pins on this side or all the clips rather and then i can slide all the pins out and i'll leave that other clip in no reason to remove that one and then uh, these will come off of the rods all right, here is the way I'm double checking. That plug right there is the access hole. So we're coming in from this side and going through over here. And this, you can see, is where the transmission is and therefore the flywheel. So we're coming in from the non-flywheel side. So the flywheel side will be the the back of the piston that we want to keep the rings on. So flywheel side, keep the rings. So flywheel side, keep the rings. So I was right, we'll take the rings off of this side, or I keep saying rings, but the clips. All right, never removed one of these, but to get them off, I think I can just use a 90 degree pick and grab it right kind of here where this little, uh, access indent is and pull it up and out let's see trying to get that pick to go under it on the inside oh, there we go i got underneath it and i'm sure it's going to shoot should be under a lot of tension so Wear safety glasses, he says, as he does not wear safety glasses. I'm just gonna kinda cover it. Ah, okay. 
popped up. So that's what it's looks that <laughs> blah, blah. that is what it looks like. So I have the original factory ones that have the little hook on them. So it makes it for makes it easier for getting out. Makes it a lot harder for putting back in. So when I put them back in, I'm gonna shave that part off. But anyway, now that it's off, I should be able to stick my finger through the other end and push. Stick my pinky through the other end. All right, stick a tool through the other end. All right, I assumed that it would just kind of slide out. But Ever seen one of these be disassembled? Only assembled. Ah, okay, you have to push really hard. Just shoving my thumb in here. Ah. And uh, it's a much tighter fit than I expected. I'm sure Porsche has a tool to push this thing out. But I'm gonna guess that it's also, uh, some socket will probably fit in there. Okay, it seems like a 14 millimeter socket fits in here rather nicely. So let me, ha. <laughs> All right, 14 millimeter did the trick. So uh, this comes off and I should, be able to push it the rest of the way out now. Ah, okay, piston pin removed from piston. All right, so these do, okay, well, it'll be easy for me to remember which side goes where, the one with the clip is gonna face the flywheel. So I'm gonna bag each of these components up separately and label them based on which cylinder they came out of. So, oh gosh, I have to do the math in my head again and uh, figure out which cylinder this is. All right, I'm gonna take off the uh, pistons for the next two. Wow, this one is even harder to get out than the first one. Uh, yeah, I got it most of the way out. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to put an extension on that 14 millimeter socket and uh, keep tapping it with a dead blow hammer to knock it all the way out. I'm gonna guess that's not the way the manual says to do it, but it is out. So I will uh, bag these guys up together. Oh, and according to my calculations, this was cylinder six, cylinder five, cylinder four. Hmm. They're not supposed to be that hard. All right, so the last thing that I need to disassemble is from bank one over here. I'm gonna disassemble the back of the connecting rod and I'm gonna leave these uh, attached because we don't need to reattach the pistons. Although once I get them off, I think the pistons are damaged. So I think I'm gonna have to replace them all together. But if I didn't have to replace them, I could just remove the uh, the end through here because when reinstalling you pre-assemble um, the piston to the rod and you tap that through um, the bore and then you connect it down here afterwards so that you can connect the piston ahead of time where you can see it so 
Uh, all that being said, you'll see that in Conrad's uh, video coming up soon on my assembly of his 997. Uh, but just knowing the assembly order, I know that to disassemble it, uh, I just need to disconnect them from here. And these are also those 18, uh, 18, 12 point 10 millimeters, it looks like. And I just ordered that tool on Amazon, so I won't be doing that right now. But um, I'll disconnect that and that through there, and then I can pull the rod out. I'm gonna leave these rods in, connected, and I think that will be the end of my uh, disassembly. And then I will start uh, another video on assessing all of the damaged parts. I'm gonna have to look at these rods see if they're bent at all since the uh, they hit the valves. Um, there are definitely marks on here that you can see and feel where the valves were hit. So I have to do research to see if I just need to buy new ones of these, buy some used ones, refurbish them. I don't know what to do yet and figure out how to measure the rods or check the rods to see if they need to be replaced too. So um, all of that coming up in the next video. So Hope you guys are enjoying this. It's kind of fun to uh, take it apart and see what's wrong. So thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.